Hello everyone and welcome. We are glad here to welcome Maurizio Fridiero, Director of Strategy and Innovation for Cooling at Schneider Electric. Maurizio, please. Thank you and welcome to the Cooling Unite Live 2020 and welcome in Schneider Electric. I'm Maurizio and I will go through the big question we have today. What will be the future for data center and in particular for data center cooling? There is a big move in the data center cooling. There are a lot of evolutions and we will go through this trying to identify the top challenges, but also the top opportunities we have to make cooling more effective in the data center business. So we are experiencing a, a big evolution in the data center. And the, the last few months show how data center are and will be more and more part of our future, not only for leisure, but for our daily life, for our daily job. So the big question is what will be our future there? Assuming that more people will be connected, more people will have access and will use the network. The digital density will increase. We are going to increase the number of data in an incredible way. We were with something around Yota byte. Now we are going to the Bronto byte as measurement for the number of data that in the network are transferred daily. But really, the digital density is increasing, and the digital density asks for more and more cooling. So cooling is part of the game, in particular because when we look at the impact of cooling. Cooling is absorbed energy, but it is also impacted by the global warming and the global increase in the ambient temperature. Data center are growing, data center are getting bigger and bigger, and this means that you have multiple chillers installed. Multiple chillers installed need to overcome the current and the future ambient temperature, but also generate heat around that. And therefore, there is much more challenges around the chiller. Moreover, the, the chiller sometimes are noisy and you need to have noise barrier as well. And this increase furthermore the, the, internal, the outdoor temperature. So we as a designer and you as user and consultant need to consider that sometimes a temperature for the reaction heat rejection unit is not the same of the outdoor temperature. We need to rate a higher and even higher uh, temperature. And now even in Europe, 45, 48, 50 or even higher outdoor temperature is something that is becoming the rule. So this is a key point together with the energy of usage. Data centers are one of the most impacting human activity globally, both on water consumption, energy consumption, human life. Cooling is absorbing more or less 40% of the power consumption in data centers. So every action we do on cooling I have a different uh, direct impact uh, on uh, the data center efficiency and the global usage of energy. Because certainly using water with evaporative system is a good choice, but even water is a big issue or will be a big issue. So we need carefully to balance efficient unit with low power consumption with evaporative systems which use water and reduce the power consumption as well. It's a difficult to find the best compromise, and it depends country by country, region by region, but we need to care, be careful that both water and energy are really two key points we need to consider. So definitely, this is reality. This is what we are experiencing in our daily life. And this is something that is moving the data center to be different than in the past. So larger and larger machine, larger and larger data center able to manage the enormous quantity of data that we are right now in the network. We were a few years back 
moving it and calculating the number of data around the zeta byte. That was an enormous number, but now we are driving on the yotta byte or the bronto byte. So one follow by 27 zeros. It is a normal number, which means an enormous quantity of data, which means an enormous quantity of cooling. So certainly cooling will be part of this, and it will be part of a large and extra large data center, and small or micro data center close the users. It's not said, it's not true that only large data center will be the future. All the data center will be the future. The large one for the clouding, the micro, and the small one for the edge computing. All of those need a different technology, need a different selection for compressors, need a different selection for the strategies. So we have a long list of constraints and need for data center. We need to uh, variable speed die compressors to be more efficient and to reduce the demand of water and the demand of energy. But uh, we have areas where the power quality is not uh, fantastic. So a more traditional technology is a better choice. We need to have and to consider scalability. So not extra large compressor only, but even modular compressors or modular and cooling machine, something that allows the data center to grow, something that is sustainable. So to reduce the carbon footprint. So all of these move us in defining that there are challenges and opportunities. We rate these and we select the top four in this list. The list is very, very long, but we try to select the, the top four in the list. The number one, in our opinion, is certainly how you design the data center. It is not a very recent evolution that temperature in the data center are higher than in the past. But now it is a fact that the majority of the data center are or should be designed at the discharge temperature at 25, 26, or 27 degrees Celsius. So these require a different technology for air conditioned unit, for chillers, for all the devices to reject the unit. Certainly, if the air conditioning unit is designed to work at 25, 26 degrees Celsius, water temperature could be 20 degrees Celsius, much higher than in the past. So when we rate the chiller, the chiller are not rated or designed at 7, 12, 12 or at 10, 15, not anymore. They are designed at 18 or 20 degrees Celsius. This means that the chiller will be more efficient, the chiller will be smaller, but the chiller must be rated for this temperature. So there will be cooling machine more and more designed for hospitals, hotels, houses, cooling machine designed for process cooling, cooling machine designed for that center. And this is one of the basic rules for any design condition. So certainly the temperature is a key driver, but there is one more. There is something that is changing our life, both on the daily life, but also on the business part is the refrigerant. All of us are aware about the efficiency and the requirement for uh, the efficiency, but uh, the laser regulation uh, after the Kigali agreement back in 2019, the move all the areas, all the zone, all the communities to reduce the traditional compressors and traditional refrigerants. This is something that is not banning or canceling the possibility to use uh, all the traditional refrigerant. This is not as it happened in the past with R22. The file in the 410A and the 513 can be still used. However, new refrigerant are coming and will be used more and more. Europe is leading on this, but this is a global revolution. So we need to consider that in the past, we have, everything was pretty easy, just one refrigerant at all. Even when we migrate to 407C in Europe, we have just one refrigerant. Then we move to R14A for scroll, 134A for screwing, turbo core, and this is the first differentiation. Now we have multiple choices for refrigerant, some of them flammable, some of them non-flammable, some of them with high GWP, some of them with very low GWP, some of them for some application, other for other applications. So it's not said that there is one choice for any 
there is choices perfect for different applications. In particular, when we look at the large part of the range, there are choices about uh, the 513, the 1234 ID, which are flammable or not flammable, which are low GWP or mid-level mid GWP, large envelope as the picture on the right, or normal envelope uh, as the 134A, low efficient, low, low power, low cooling capacity or high cooling capacity. According to the choice you need to have, we are able to fulfill you. We have all the range suitable for that. Are you looking for low GWP? The choice is certainly the 1234ZD, which is featured by lower capacity, which is the best compromise, the 513. It is not flammable. But if you are looking at the air-cooled chiller, probably the flammability is not a problem anymore. So let's say that we need to have an overall choice, looking at Snyder is able to provide all the chiller for you, all the solution for you, with the refrigerant available, with turbo core or screw or scroll compressor to comply with your request. Then there is a different point the temperature, the refrigerant, and now a new point is the standards. All the globe, all the counters are moving in the right direction. They are moving to reduce the power consumption. China, Australia, Europe, North America are requiring to have cooling, which is more and more efficient. Europe is again leading this and did a great change in 2018 when uh, introduced eco design divide the efficiency by application so the european community with the eco design directive the first tier in 2018 and the new one on january 1st next year this decide and define to have different efficiency requirement if you are looking at comfort cooling process cooling data center data center so when the temperature exceed 12 degrees celsius are rated as efficient when you look at the process cooling you need to look at the seasonal efficiency as the sepr parameter then there is when you're looking at the comfort the ser the seasonal energy efficiency ratio so really there is not the right choice there is the right unit for the right application and the eco design is forcing all the uh, players to follow on this. So this is something that certainly impact on us as manufacturers, but impact also on you when you select the unit, when you select the temperature where the unit is designed for. Because the higher is the temperature, the better is the unit, the better is the operation. If you select variable speed drive compressor, pumps or other logic small compressor, the efficiency is much higher. So it is our choice to design with that. It is your choice to select the unit designed for that. So certainly there are tools right now to comply with these and we need to work together to make it happen. In particular, when you look at the variable speed drive compressors, certainly part load conditions are much more effective for the variable speed drive compressors. And when we look at the diagram there, and in particular where the variable speed is better than the traditional compressors, is at part load condition. And definitely this helps in getting more and more efficiency. And certainly when we look at the product range we have, the pro range with inverter is already suitable for the Eco Design 2021. So definitely, the point number three of this classification is the energy standard. Last but not least, we have one more, is how we design together. We need to design the data center with a holistic approach, not looking at the chiller or the transformer or the gen set by themselves. We need to look at, at the overall design. And this is the best way to design, certainly. There are no other way to do this. So again, talking about variable speed and the electrical infrastructure, variable speed dry compressor are certainly more expensive than traditional compressor. You have the inverter. There is something more on the unit. However, 
there is a capital expense reduction. The unit is, and the data center is less expensive. So you can decide if you use a reduction, this as a reduction of the capital expense, or to keep the capital expense and extend the amperage you have for the infrastructure. This is an holistic approach on the electrical post point of view. On the compressor point of view, certainly TurboCore, when compared to screw compressor, can help on this. The amperage starting current are certainly something that allow to have a lot of saving on the electrical infrastructure, on the genset, on the transformer. So if you have to make a choice, when you look at the overall investment, certainly we need to look at the cost of the unit, but we need also to look at the capital expenses for the entire data center. This is the same on the water side. The trend, one of the trend is to increase wide delta T, to use wide delta T, to move from 712 or the traditional six degrees Celsius delta T on the uh, inlet and outer temperature to much more on the 10 or 12. This certainly impact on the air conditioning unit, but it reduce the pipe works, it reduce the pump power, it reduce the pressure drop of the system. So at the end of the day, the overall figures shows that the data center is more efficient, is less expensive, and the overall uh, holistic view is much better than thinking only to the small portion of each of the components. So certainly those are, in our opinion, the most important um, trend we see on the market. Those are tools for you to think about that. Definitely we think that refrigerant, temperature, new variables, pedal compressors and the energy standards are a great opportunity to make our life less impacting the overall global footprint, carbon footprint. So definitely those are something that it makes sense to look at and work together how to use this and work more and more about that. Thank you. I hope this is helpful for you and thanks again for your attention. Thank you very much, Maurizio. And uh, we are we will be very happy to share questions with you and to engage with you. You just go in the chat box, there is a link, you click there, and we will see you in a moment in the QA room. Thank you very much. Thank you.